Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to have a more in-depth look at Clan Mulder's Flesh Laboratory, a mechanic which focuses on the augmentation of your new units to create your own units in a way. A few of you have requested a more in-depth analysis just to show off everything about it, so with that, let's not waste any more time and jump right in. First, we need to look at the growth fat. This is where the first of two new resources are available to you. The growth fat is the repository where you will store growth juice. This is the first of two resources. Through the acquisition of growth juice, you will be able to unlock Mutagen, the other new resource, while also unlocking a pseudo blessed spawning type of unit for the Skaven. Growth juice can be acquired in the following ways. Recycling units, through buildings, passive gain and also battles. It is through battle, either auto-resolved or physically fought, which will provide the fastest way to gain growth juice. You're playing as the Skaven, as long as you're aggressive in your playstyle, you'll be gaining growth juice at a rapid speed, especially if you have a few sack cities that you can take advantage of. You'll notice that the growth fat is a resource bar. Filling up the bar will allow you to claim the growth fat matter and refine it into mutagen, where you'll get 100 mutagen and 10 food, which can also be upgraded to 15. This is highly beneficial for you, especially if you're the type of player who likes to settle the cities at maximum level as soon as possible, rather than building them from the ground up. The perfect tip here is having one or two, maybe even three sack cities in Norska. You'll be able to farm mutagen at an incredible rate, so you'll be able to settle cities all the way up to their maximum level, even capitals at level 5 relatively quickly. Claiming these vats alongside the food and mutagen will also grant you access to pseudo blessed spawned units. This is the best way to explain them as it's very similar in style to that of the Lizardmen's Blessed Spawns. Every time you claim the VAT, you'll get access to some new units, which can be instantly recruitable without having to wait a turn or two. The growth VAT that you see on the main screen is actually a smaller version of the much larger one that you can see in the Flesh Laboratory. It's here where you'll see various points at which you can unlock different units. These are known as clusters, and each of the clusters will give you a different unit. The first is Wolf Rats, the second is Rat Ogres, the third is a Brood Horror, the fourth is a Mutant Rat Ogre, and the fifth is a Helped Abomination. So if you've gotten to the point where the Vat is full for the Wolf Rats, but you have decided not to claim it, you can then wait and it will tick over to the next, which would be the Rat Ogres. This will continue until the very end with the Helped Abomination. If you haven't claimed it manually, it will automatically claim itself, giving you access to a plethora of new units, 10 food and 100 mutagen, if unbuffed of course. Now a thing to note here, if you want more mutagen to upgrade your already available units, don't wait until you get all the way until the Helped Abomination. It is much faster to empty the vat as soon as you fill out its first requirement, the one that will give you access to wolf rats. Sure, they might not be the best unit to have, especially in late game, but this is the fastest way for you to gain mutagen. The growth vats themselves have a little bit of RNG involved, where you can end up getting a superior batch and end up receiving many more units than you originally anticipated. In this clip, I managed to get a superior batch, which unlocked one unit of wolf rats with poison, two Skaven slaves, generic hand weapons, and two wolf rat units. That fills up my unit roster with Frot's armies from 11 units to 16. That means that AI factions will then have to think twice before attacking me. Now we can look at the other individual parts of the Flesh Laboratory. First, Infantry Augmentations, which you can use to buff up your infantry of course. While Clan Molder is known to augment and create monsters, they can also do it with their frontline units. 
Monster augmentations will also work in the same way, where you can have your monsters buffed up in a variety of different ways tailored to your exact specific needs. And finally, the laboratory itself, which will focus around different buffs. Some of those buffs are temporary, whilst others are permanent. To upgrade these units, you'll need the resource Mutagen, which is easy enough to acquire. However, it is important to note, as you can see on screen right now, that if you acquire too much Mutagen, it will start to degrade. You can use the laboratory itself to upgrade your resource capacity, but even then that has its limits. The main reason I want to point this out is if you already have enough Mutagen, before you start emptying more growth vats, you'd be best to start upgrading units as soon as you can if you so want to, so no mutagen goes to waste. Generally, it will degrade by 20 per turn once you've hit the cap. Let's look at the upgrade system in Infantry Augmentations, where we'll use some clan rats as test subjects. There are a variety of different upgrades. You will notice that the grand majority of them, however, are locked behind chains. How this works is that you'll need to progress your way through the actual tree. So by unlocking, say for example, the first tier's first and second upgrade, you'll unlock tier 2's first upgrade, where the only way to unlock every upgrade would be by unlocking everything. The upgrades themselves will vary, each of them being specialized to different things, so some upgrades might be more beneficial to certain units than to others. You won't be able to get too many upgrades on one specific unit. After a while, there is a chance for you to make them unstable. Of course, even clan rats have their limits. You'll still be able to rack up a nice amount of different bonuses, but it is important to note that unstable units themselves will suffer attrition whilst on the battlefield, meaning that when you start a new battle, they'll start taking damage too. This will obviously put you at a disadvantage, so unless you want to risk it, don't spend all your time upgrading units that you might use constantly. A good tip here would be to field a second army with a bunch of slave units, and use them to experiment on, just so you can unlock any upgrades of worth for any units that you will be using in battle. The exact same can be said for the monster augments. Your cheapest option here are the wolf rats, so you might as well make them your test subjects. A quick note here is that any unstable units can also be recycled. Recycling will of course destroy the unit, but it will provide some growth juices back to you, so the slaves that you've been testing on will at least have one more purpose. And finally, we're at the laboratory itself which offers a different range of bonuses, both permanent and temporary. So, how this works is that they'll be divided into separate sections, as you can see on screen. Originally, you will only have access to the first three potential upgrades. To unlock the others, all you have to do is empty out the growth vats, and since that will be a basic thing throughout your campaign, it won't be long until you unlock them all. The bonuses do vary, and will cost different amounts of resources. In most cases, you'll be spending both food and gold, both of which won't be an issue, especially later campaign. Early on, you might not use this as much. It's understandable, some of these bonuses do cost quite a bit of cash but try and focus the Biorecycle Chamber upgrade as soon as you can. This will allow you to increase your maximum capacity of mutagen from 100 to 200. And finally, Abnormal Growth Cultivation will give you food generation per recycled unit. An extra 5 food per recycled unit can be very beneficial, especially if you're going to be testing on slaves. But with that, I believe I've covered everything of interest with the Flesh Laboratory and hopefully this helps you when the DLC launches and you've started your Clan Molder campaigns. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% off. 
making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel's been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.